Miami continues to be on fire. Miami continues to be on fire. I know, I keep saying this. This is my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. The same way some of y'all didn't agree with me about Julia. I, I told you, it's okay for you guys to disagree. Just state all the reasons, and some of you did. I still, look, I like the cast. I'm not trying to fire anyone. Everyone can come back next season, all right? But I wouldn't be mad, and this is what I said. I wouldn't be mad if Julia didn't, to be honest. But Julia is friends with Adriana, and for me, Adriana... I'm okay with Adriana being a friend of, but I know that she is desperate for that mojito. She wants that money, obviously. We don't know, we, she, I don't think she's been very transparent that she's not rich. And especially in this episode, she's revealing that Alexia is not rich. I, I don't trust a thing that comes out of Alexia's mouth at this point. And honestly, watching the episode at the beginning, I was sort of like, Oh, so she's, you know, her lease is up. So she's, you know, they sold the place and that's why she's moving. But then Adriana's scene came in and I said, well, maybe Adriana's story sounds a little bit more um, likely. Uh, of course, more drama filled. But remember about the whole Todd not coming to the party situation and Adriana was backed up by Lisa in what Todd said when they were leaving the party. And Alexia was saying a whole other thing. Alexia is not going to make you see her sweat. She's a Taurus. This is where I can understand Alexia. She's not going to let you see her sweat. She's not going to tell you all her business. That's why I always said Tauruses aren't great reality TV. However, I wouldn't say that Alexia's not great reality TV. Maybe not great for her, but yeah. Anyways, so before we even get into uh, the Real Housewives of Miami, I am still in Japan. This time I'm in Kyoto. I'm going to celebrate New Year's Eve here in Kyoto. Went up to Nara earlier today. Saw the deer. It's very, it's very famous for going up there to feeding the deer and things like that. So I went up there, of course. I spent the night, for those that follow me on here on YouTube and you're a channel member, you were the first to know. I spent the night at a Buddhist temple here in Kyoto, which was an interesting experience. It was, it, and I'm not even talking about the whole temple part. It was the facilities where we stayed. I thought we might be staying in a little like, you know, simple, it looks simple. <laughs> this hotel, they could upgrade their toilet because at the Buddhist temple, they had the top of the line Toto, te um, you know, situation toilet. Like I walked into the bathroom and the toilet welcomed me. <laughs> come on, come on, it welcomed me. So now every bathroom I go to here in, in Japan, I'm like, I want it to welcome me. However, what I do love, because you know I love a bidet. If, you don't, if you're new here, I, I do love a bidet. I've had a bidet in my home for a few years now. So when I travel, that's one of the things that I kind of miss. <laughs> look, look, that's what I miss from being home. But I knew in my preparation for coming to Japan, I was like, it's common here. But to really go out in public, you go to a public bathroom and there is actually bidets there, I was like... I love this country, <laughs> but I love the Buddhist temple. The Buddhist temple, the facilities, first of all, the facilities were beautiful. I mean, I will talk more about my Japan trip, but I feel like there's so much to talk about. Stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to the Kempire podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify because that will be a, pod, a podcast exclusive. And don't forget, we are uploading our live recaps, additional episodes, and more to the Kempire podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And while you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. I told you before the new year, time's a ticking, time's a ticking. Before the new year, I want to get to 500 reviews on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. You gotta have goals. And I don't think it's impossible for us to reach that goal because at least 500 of you, 500 of you will watch this video, at least, <laughs> thankfully. So do me a favor. As you're preparing for the new year, as you're preparing to close out, do something nice for someone else. <laughs> Go give me a five-star review. Tell a friend to tell a friend to give me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Let's get into this Real Housewives of Miami recap. Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up.
Welcome back to the Kempire channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe, and if you're listening, don't forget to subscribe to the Kempire podcast. That's, an, that's also a great way if you want to listen to the content, if you don't have a YouTube premium and you want to listen while you're grocery shopping or you're preparing your meals and things like that, here's another really great option for you to listen to the show and, you know, get the same experience, you know, through my vocals. Okay, my vocals, my yummies, mm, 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 fire. Anyways, <laughs> I've digressed. But Miami is really on fire. And I know I keep saying this every single week, but the nonsensical drama, the comedy that the ladies bring, the confessionals, I'm not going to say it's because they're on Bravo now, but the lighting, whoever is doing the lighting, this is just a, a soft critique. The lighting that we get we got on Peacock seemed great. This season, the lighting for some of their confessionals seems a little harsh. A little harsh. Like, this lighting is beautiful. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have a ring light. They have this thing in here. I, I wish I could turn my camera around, but I can't. Um, but it's, it's, it's very Japanese where it's sort of like a window and it's like a big circle. So it almost looks like the sun is coming up. So that is brightening my face. So it's sort of like this ring light that they have makeshift in here. Anyways, I've digressed. <laughs> but Miami, Real Housewives of Miami, episode nine, I think this is. First of all, Alexia. All right, let's talk about this opening scene. So Alexia takes Peter because she, and look, and I've said this before, I'm not going to be upset with Alexia spoiling Peter. Here's the problem, though. We've seen Peter's behavior over the years and her being um, spoiling him. Which is it's so funny how she was tr trying to come down on Lisa and her mothering because no one likes that. And I'm not going to try and come down on Alexia's mothering, but the product is here, the, Peter. And I saw a lot of you making fun of Peter and how he how he acts and the way he looked. I'm not going to do any of that. What I will say is that there's something, I don't know if it's depression. I don't know if it's just he's a disgusting human being. And I can say that because he came up into my comment section on Instagram trying to be homophobic. So I can say that because um, I have firsthand experience of his disgusting behavior. But because I'm not a disgusting human being and I have a hort, I was like, something's off with him. I don't know if it's if he needs therapy. I don't know if it's depression. I don't know what it is. But his energy was just so like, blah. And I don't know what that is. I hope he gets help. So they, she goes, she takes him, him shopping for furniture because he's getting a new apartment around this area. So he's going shopping. Here's the thing. I don't know who's paying for it. I don't know if even Alexia can pay for it. But she has enabled his behavior for so long. That's why no one is surprised that he behaves the way that he does. And look, he hasn't been in trouble. <laughs> look, look. Mm, in a while, okay, a season or two. I mean, no, I mean, technically a season because last season we were talking about his, his situation with that, that woman he was dating. Alexia says that he's not dating anyone right now. He's moving into this apartment and she's like, if you like the neighborhood, maybe you can buy something, which leads us to the conversation about Alexia and Todd moving out of their home. And because this is what Alexia says. She says they, they're moving out because the owner, because they've been renting this home is selling the place and now they have 15 days to get out of the get out of the house which i love that building i love that house i love that apartment apartment's beautiful and alexis you know because i made it so beautiful it, it sold really quickly but she says she she doesn't todd actually does not believe in buying he, he believes more into buying commercial real estate my thing is i know some people come down hard on people that rent my thing is, if you have money to throw away, go ahead and rent. But my thing is, I wouldn't rent personally unless I can, especially if, if, I, if I have the ability to own something. I wouldn't rent unless I owned multiple things or I owned at least something else. You know what I mean? So that, that's my thing. In, in New York City, it's big to, to rent. You know, it's, 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 and rents are crazy in New York City. And it's almost impossible to buy something outright in new york city however 
I don't want to judge Todd, but there seems to be a little smoke around the financial situation with Todd and in Alexia now. Because now I'm not sure if I believe that's the reason why he doesn't want to buy anything. But look, I'm not going to sit here and act as if I know everything about real estate. But we have a lot of real estate folks in, in the comment section and people that watch this view. Please weigh in. When is it an ideal time to rent? My thing is, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I've been considering because I'm considering moving, but I don't want to buy something until I know I like the neighborhood and not necessarily whatever I'm going to move into is not what I'm going to buy necessarily, but I want to see the neighborhood. I want to, to get to know, you know, more about, you know, buying in that neighborhood and what that will mean long-term in regards to real estate. What's the resale value and things like that. And what can I learn about being in a, you know, because in New York City, it's mostly like, you know, high rise buildings, and things like you can buy townhouses and things like that. So that's that's what I'm thinking. I like I don't judge anyone that that rents. Honestly, I don't judge anyone that rents because I feel as if renting is there for a reason. Renting is definitely there for a reason and people will, will be utilizing it. I didn't realize that. That's what Alexia and Todd have been doing. But it makes me wonder, like Alexia, you know, last week I was telling you guys, I was wondering about Alexia and the whole situation with um, Herman and her fighting his estate. It makes me wonder what exactly did she get at the end of Herman's life? And did Herman really have a lot to give? I know he gave something to, to his boy toy, but there's a lot of people out here fronting y'all. There's a lot of out, people out here fronting like they got it like that and they really don't. So Alexia has to move out of her home in 15 days. She says because the home has been sold and she said this is the downside of not owning. And and it's true. As soon as she, as soon as she said that she had to move out, I was like, well, this is part of the reason why you don't rent. You can move out on your own terms when you own something. So she says in the meantime, they, they might end up buying a house, but she doesn't like living in a house because of Frankie. And I and then, and see when she she opens up about stuff like this, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. In a building, it's a little bit more secure. You have neighbors that will look out for you for Frankie in the building. The the front door uh, person will look out for Frankie. If Frankie decides, oh, I'm leaving. They'll be like, wait, where are you going? And like they they will. It's a little bit more protection for Frankie, which I'm sure for her is great. So she's like, you know, I can go work. I can go do other things. You know what I mean? So. I understood that because, <clears throat> you know, we love Frankie. <laughs> Look, Frank, it, it, she minute she mentioned Frankie, I was like, yes, you're right. We need Frankie protected at all costs. Julia, because a lot of you were not a lot of you, <laughs> a small handful of you, a, uh, you know, felt like, oh, no, Julia needs to stay. She has this going on, this going on, this going on, this going on. She's friends with OK, you can have your feelings. But like I said, I would not be sad if Julia was not on the show anymore. I would not miss her, honestly. But she has been a good part of the season as a whole, as the the, the reboot as a whole, because we got Martina, <laughs> to be honest with you. And look, and I also do remember what we've gotten the last couple of seasons from, but, but here's the thing, because some of you mentioned, oh, but remember she had the whole baby situation that... Yeah, that came out during the reunion. That didn't come out during the actual season. And we have not even talked about that since. Everything, at least this season, has been very orchestrated, very forced. And Julia has come, you know, trying to get involved in everyone's mess. But look, I can appreciate her trying. But like I said, I feel like the cast is solid. I wouldn't really change anyone at this point. You know, like certain casts were like, it's time for you to go. Hey, regular Robin. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain people that say, hey, Giselle. Like, there's certain people are stinking up the place. I don't feel like Julia is stinking up the place. Do I find her the most entertaining? No. But that's okay. That's okay. All right. So, Julia. So, Julia talks about her farm. So, she, she went from having a couple of animals to having a whole a lot of animals. She says that Martina has not financially helped her with this farm. And then I was like... I do know that Julia was a model before, but again, like I said, a lot of y'all think these people have money that don't. Julia was a model before. Was she a top model? Even if you were a top model, go ask the top models. How, where is that? 
Y'all really think someone was a top, unless they were financially investing in things, and there are some, and I'm not saying that's not what Julia has done, but the way she's created this farm and not making a profit from it says to me that, mm, I don't know what Julia's situation, but who were we, were we talking about before? Here's another housewife show. Oh, Sutton. Sutton was like, oh, I did this all on my own. Yes. And then like, did your husband pay for, pay, give you spot? Did you use the spouse support? And she's like, yes. <laughs> so part of me feels like maybe Martina does help or helped launch it. And I'm not saying that it's impossible. I don't want to take away from Julia. I don't think Julia's dumb either. But you have this farm that's not profitable at this moment, but she knows that she needs to make it profitable. And maybe that's why at BravoCon she was doing those preserves. Well, if those preserves are from your farm, Julia, you're going to be, have gold because that sucker was good. And I keep reminding myself that I need to order. I've been traveling though since BravoCon. I need to order those preserves because I was literally um, not waiting in line. I was talking to someone that was waiting in line to go um, get a picture with Julia. And the guy was giving out the preserves. And I said, oh, I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is good, Julia. I'm going to check your website. I'm assuming this is from her farm. Good for her. I remember during a pandemic, a lot of people were saying that we need to start becoming farming our own food. I mean, I haven't started that yet, but anyways. <laughs> anyways. So, um, so she talks about that, but then she, her and Adriana start discussing what went down with Lisa and how the group was attacking Lisa and Adriana feels like Alexia has no ground to walk on in regards to, you know, talking about someone's relationship because there's a lot of things going on with her and Todd. And this is when she reveals that she heard from Anna that Todd and Alexia are having financial issues. They're having financial issues. I was like, tell me more. And she says that um, that they're, they're, they're actually breaking their lease and not having to move out. That, like, they're not being forced to, to move out. They are trying to move out, probably to something more inexpensive, maybe. <laughs> so that is what um, Adriana says Anna told her. So, of course, and I agree with Julia here because Julia's like, I am very uncomfortable because you know Julia's trying to form a friendship with Alexia, but now Adriana's put her in this tough position. But we knew this was coming because Adriana and Alexia, even though when they had a little, you know, white flag moment, we knew immediately, like the next scene or the next episode, Adriana was already talking bad about Alexia and how Alexia is lying or about something. So she reveals that it's Anna that told her. And you know, shout out to our friends over at Behind the Velvet Rope. I remember seeing this interview with Anna and her daughter. And she dropped all kinds of tea. And I told you guys, wouldn't you be open to Anna coming back? I remember re-watching Miami before the new Miami started. And I remember Anna's season. And I was like, I liked Anna. Some of you didn't. And I know because of some of the things that she said at that reunion. But before that, look, look, before that, I liked Anna's family. I liked her her weird relationship with her ex-husband. I liked her, but I don't think she lives in Miami anymore. Or maybe she does part-time, she's at back and forth. But sidebar, speaking of Peter, and this is probably part of the reason why Alexia and Marisol do not see it for Anna. And I don't blame them, but you, we need somebody to shake up this cast a little bit. I feel like a, the, the folks are a little too... I don't know, easy with each other. I don't know. I And I, we've been talking about this. And I said, maybe it's Leah Black that needs to come back. But no, maybe it's Anna. And is this their way of bringing Anna back into the fold? I'd be open to it. But Marisol and Alexia don't want to be open to it. But it doesn't matter if Nicole, Dr. Nicole, Kiki, um, Adriana, if all of them are cool with her, Anna could come back. And I want Anna to come back. We don't need any more friend ofs unless you unless we're going to upgrade a friend of. But a lot of you said that people they should upgrade Adriana. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Adriana upgraded, to be honest with you. I, they got to get away from this whole premise that you have to be married. You have to have a relationship. I feel like Adriana has a lot going on. And I want to see what's going on with her family, her son. Like, we haven't seen her son. I don't know if he's in Miami or, or I know he went away to college. But, like, I want a, a life update on her personal life on some level but i'm okay with her being a friend of as well you could just pay them more <laughs> like i i think adriana would be just happy with that just pay me more 
Pay me more. I'll, I'll continue to stir the pot. And I told you, I feel like Adriana, especially this season, has been trying to stir the pot, trying to get more scenes. Probably is her way of trying to negotiate. Yes, pay me more. And I'll stir the pot. I'll be a producer's pet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, guys, if you're watching this, don't forget to like the video, subscribe. It is a subscribers only live chat. But if you're listening to this, don't forget to subscribe there and to give us a five star rating. As always, guys, don't forget we have a New York City live show, Campfire After Dark, coming to uh, Green Room 42 on January 25th. Tickets are selling really fast. I don't know where we are with our meet and greets, but I, like a week ago, I told you we had 11. I don't know the updated number, but I'm pretty sure a lot that is selling fast. All right. Meet and greets are selling fast. Speaking of selling fast, we also have a DC show. It is Valentine's Day week that we're coming February 16th. We will be in Washington, DC for our live show at Union Stage. Tickets for that show are selling even faster than New York City. Not my own city getting outpaced by DC, but I told y'all, I was like, I wasn't surprised. DC, y'all hold me down in the surrounding areas. I know that you will all be there. It's going to be a fun show. If you want to know what kind of show it's going to be, what you enjoy about what we bring here. But it's going to be Kempire After Dark. We're going to talk that talk. You're going to be able to get up and, and give us a short and shady comment or question. It's going to be that show. I'm not going to come out with a bunch of, you know, tap dancing and, you know, this guest here or that. And no shade to anyone that this is our show. This is our show and it's going to be kitchen table talk from beginning to end. All right. Stay tuned for more dates. Again, more information on both shows will be available in the description of the video and the episode. All right. So <laughs> Adriana drops all this tea and Julia feels in an awkward position that she knows any of this information. And Adriana's like, you know, I, I this is not me. Anna told me all of this. And you have to make it very clear. Anna's the one who told her this. But Anna's been dropping all kinds of tea. She was she dropped a lot of tea on uh, David Yonce's podcast, Behind the Velvet Robe. I forgot when they did this interview, but the daughter also dropped tea on Alexia's son, Peter. I don't. I know I, I was going there. I don't know if I came all the way there to tell you that she dropped some tea about some of the things that he may have done or allegedly have done. So I can see why Marisol and Alexia don't see it for Anna. Does that mean I don't want to see Anna on my show? Nope, I want to see her. <laughs> Look, and I'm so happy. This was like a pleasant surprise. But I told you last season, bring Anna back. And they did. And they, and they did. And do I think it was Dr. Nicole behind it or Adriana? No, it was production. Production sidebar. When we first started doing Miami, production, an executive producer, was in the live chat. So I know they watch. This is not ego. I know that they watch. I mean, I've been featured on three of their shows. So <laughs> I know that they watch. So producers were like, let's bring Anna back. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's because of me. She was also on a podcast and it, those clips went viral, clearly. And they featured it on this last episode, what Anna said about, what, what Anna's daughter said about Marisol being like a corpse. Yeah, I got to leave her alone, though. I really do. I really do enjoy my Marisol. I know y'all think that she has a drinking problem and I will... Fight hard to let y'all know that she does not. <laughs> she does not. You know, they really haven't shown Marisol drink. I mean, she does drink, but they really haven't. She hasn't played it up this season as much. You notice that? At least that, that I don't recall them playing it up as much. All right. Lisa and Jody. So Lisa goes over to Jody's home. And Lisa, oh, what do I want to say about Lisa. So she has this moment where she's like, you know, Jody's hot and Lenny's not. It, it feels forced. It feels a little cringy, but I get it. You're literally in the middle. You're literally in the middle of a divorce. And that's why you, you're comparing the situation. But this is why a lot of people also believe that you shouldn't be in a relationship because you're in such a messy divorce. All right. So... Lisa goes over to Jody and Jody sets up a dinner and immediately before Lisa said anything, I was like, oh, this looks like the dinner that they did in the backyard of her home. Remember she set up that dinner for Lenny and they flash back to that. She's like, oh my God, this looks familiar. 
But this time, this was Jody actually doing it. All right. So, um, so Jody sits down with her, and they they're 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 talking about having. Um, let me rewind. Let me rewind, y'all, because I I got sidetracked. So, oh, Lisa and Jody talk about the ladies reacting to what happened in the last episode when they were in, in Palm Beach. And he says, you know, when, when I'm with them, they seem really nice. But now they're talking about my finances and things like that. Honestly, I felt like the ladies were saying what we've been saying. is, the, And they were trying to protect Jody. If anything, them bringing this up to Lisa made her have that conversation with him, even though... I felt like this was a pre-produced scene. I'm sure she already spoke to him about this. And in this moment, Jody says, well, I wish you would check in on me sometimes. And I appreciate him saying that because it's true. But we have to also remember astrological signs. We talk that here. If you're new, we do. Lisa's a Leo. And shout out to all the Leos. I have a Leo moon. Leos, Leos do better. And if you're ever dating a Leo, Leos do better with the way that Jody treats Lisa admiration all the time always uplifting leos suck that up because although leos will come and present to you like they are secure and that they love themselves and they're they're the bomb and they are in a lot of ways however they're also very incredibly insecure leos and i can see that in in lisa but also leos are stereotypically self-centered Sorry, <laughs> sorry to all the Leos. Leo Moon, whoa, 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 I can relate. <laughs> but I'm see, I'm balanced. I have my Taurus Sun, Earth, Leo Moon, Fire, and then I have my Cancer Rising, Water. I'm balanced. Some of y'all got too much of of a thing in <laughs> in your situation. All right, all right. Anyways, so jody says I, I wish you would check in in on me a little bit more and then she's she she's like oh wow i didn't realize that that's that this was happening she says before she was dating lenny she used to be more like that i don't believe that lisa i don't believe that i think it's it's, it's easier to say when you were with lenny and i do believe being with someone like lenny did change you did you did get wrapped up in his world i do believe that but I think you are a typical Leo. <laughs> it's all about you. And that's all and maybe that's why you stuck in the relationship as long as you did because although it really wasn't all about you, he was doing his own thing with Lenny. He made it seem like it was all about you. Like, oh, you're the wife. That's all that matters. You're the one living in this house. You're the one with the bags and the things and things like that. That is what I believe. But that's my opinion. I don't know. We're watching an edited show. We don't know these people. But that's this is my assessment of what I've seen so far with, with Lisa. But I appreciate Jody saying how he feels. And he used this moment to say, I wish you would check in on me. Which was important because I feel like he would end up resenting her. Will he still resent her? I mean, I hope not. But... I think Lisa just can't help herself. It's going to take effort, like setting a reminder. We'll get back to that. Uh, we have a scene with Dr. Cole and her mom and discussing her dad and what's going on with her dad. We're going to see more of her dad, I think, this season. And it's, it's just sad because some of you didn't even realize that her dad had passed away. Uh, and we already talked last week about that scene with him and him possibly having, well, not possibly, he said he has two kids and, that uh, Dr. Nicole did not know about. And the mom was like, well, I've heard things and I didn't think I know about one of them. And then Dr. Cole's talking about possibly doing a DNA test to see if there's any others out there. And she's like, well, don't open a can of worms. You might, you might. She's like, because she, her mom's like, well, I think maybe you should have a relationship with them. Would you be open to having a relationship with your siblings? I mean, I wouldn't have been mad at Dr. Cole if she's like, no. Because her father was a Rolling Stone. He had a lot of different women and, and babies. I wouldn't blame her. On some levels, like, oh, well, you are part of my family. And see, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in that position. So it is someone that is a part of your family. So why not? Why not? You know, that could be sometimes you end up being closer with that person. That's not, you know, your mom and dad's kid, but just your dad's kid. You end up being closer with them. You just never know. All right, let's talk about Gertie. So, you know, Gertie, um, Gertie, I always do that. Sorry, Gertie. 
but I'm get, I'm doing better this season. Okay, so Gertie hangs out with her family because, as you know, we watched was the last season where she was like she had to learn to prioritize her family because she was so busy doing a lot of different things, and because of the cancer, she's like that is a priority for me. This is what I'm going to make sure that I do all the time. All right, um, so they go out bowling. First off. I really was like, okay, maybe the kids and Gertie can't bowl, fine. But when I saw Russell getting ready to go, I was like, Russell's going to get a strike. And womp, 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 womp. <laughs> but b- bowling is fun. I haven't gone bowling since I went on a date with someone. We went bowling. And I was like, bowling is a lot of fun. But bowling's not a, like, I also don't love a lot of people. So where we went bowling, it was like in Yonkers. So it wasn't crazy busy at this particular bowling alley. But I feel like if you go to the bowling alleys in Manhattan, if there's even any in Manhattan anymore, there used to be. I don't even know if there was any anymore. I learned that there was a cat cafe in New York and no one ever told me. Did y'all know we have cat cafes in New York? And you're probably thinking, what's a cat cafe? Where you can go cuddle with cat, a cats and have a little snack? <laughs> they have a lot of them here in Japan. But not just cats. They have them with owls. I went and did one with an owl. You can do them with hamsters and all kinds of other stuff. I believe you can even do them with um, a seal? I can't remember what it was. A bunch. A bunch. But I did one with owls, which was interesting. I was like, I'm not going to do one with a cat here because I can do that in New York, apparently. Funny. Anyways. All right. Um... So Gertie hangs out, hit the scene. I ended up tearing up, y'all. I ended up tearing up because I could see that something was wrong with her son, Miles, who's the older of the boys. I was like, oh. And I was like, maybe it's the cameras. Maybe he doesn't like filming. But no, she starts talking about her cancer and the journey and, you know, what this is going to be and, and how she's prioritizing this and that she's going to be okay. I started not bawling. But I teared up because you could see he was having a hard time because he's older. He probably understands a little bit more. And who knows if he's Googled anything. Um, the, the other son was, he seems, you know, okay. But he could just play it probably better. I could see on Miles's face. Oh, that broke my heart. It broke my heart to see, see his reaction. Because I, I could tell before she started, you know, checking in more on him in that scene. I could already tell his body language, his face was very, very just sort of like, you know, you know, just stoic. And then you like, I think if they, she had talked anymore, he would have, he would have been crying. I started crying watching his reaction. And I'm just so happy. I always remind you guys at BravoCon, Gertie revealed that she is cancer free. I'm so glad, but we're going to watch this journey. It's not easy. I thought it, I was done crying for Gertie's stuff, but we're not even. She's preparing for her surgery in this in, in this scene. So, oh, Gertie, thank you so much. And I we said this before with Kimmy on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Thank you for being brave and sharing your story for other people to be inspired by and find hope in, because it's not easy and they don't have to. I know we expect these housewives to share every aspect of their lives, but I think production would have understood if Gertie said, I can't, I can't share much of this. Okay. So shout out to Gertie for, for doing that. And thank God you're, you're doing okay. And shout out to her boys. Shout out to her boys. And shout out to Russell. Cause Russell's just like, he's been, but they've been together a long time, but that doesn't mean anything. This could be the thing that makes him go like, oh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> but he didn't. I didn't think that he would. But yeah. Anyways, Alexia meets Todd. And this is where we find out that they're looking to, to spend between 40 and 50K a month for a rental. Here's the thing. I would understand it. I don't know how much Todd makes. I don't know his finances. I don't know Alexia's finances. But based on how they move... And yes, I've seen them spend what was it, like seventy thousand on a watch. I I don't know how much Todd makes, but to spend forty to fifty thousand dollars a month in rent says to me that you must be a multi multi millionaire. That's a lot of money to spend on rent when you could be spending that on a mortgage and own it. 
And I'm not going to sit here and act like I am a financial expert, but I do know that renting is paying someone else's mortgage and that money you do not get anything back on. You don't get anything for spending that money. So this is part of the reason why people are like, why rent? But like I said, renting makes sense for certain people. Like I gave you one example. There's plenty of other examples. And again, shout out to all the real estate agents and people that know real estate and people that have rented where it makes sense. For me, if I'm going to rent something in the future, which I'm considering, it's because I want to check out an area. I don't want to commit to buying something in an area that I'm not familiar with. But there are a whole assortment of reasons why people rent. Some people are like, I'm not going to live in this particular city, state, or country um, in a year or two. So I'm just going to rent something. Why am I going to buy something if I'm not saying, if, I'm, if I don't feel I'm going to be able to stay in this area? Anyways, so they have that discussion. She's going to meet with her real estate person because they need to get out of there in 15 days. Lisa and Larsa hang out. I have to say, this episode, if I put aside what Larsa has done to Gertie, I did like Lisa, in, not Lisa, Larsa in this episode. Just because these are the moments, like her confessionals, like her funny moments. Like when she got into the Corolla, when, when Lisa picked her up in Corolla, she was like, I feel like we're about to go rob someone. And people wouldn't know it was us because they would never expect that we'd be in a Corolla. But she got really vulnerable speaking to Lisa, talking about her divorce and how she expected that his side of the family, that it would always be family. And she said that just wasn't the case once they got a divorce. And I was like, that's real. That's real. And I appreciate these moments with Larsa. I wish she would do better. I feel like the whole Gertie situation could have been handled a lot better. However, she chose the wrong path. But she chooses to be vulnerable with Lisa because she's really friends with Lisa. So they do give us an update on the Lisa, on the Lenny. Did he remove the motion about, about getting full custody? We get a little bit of an update. She says he hasn't removed it yet, but he, if he knows what's good for him, he will. I was like, when I when she was talking, I was like, Lisa, you are ill equipped. He will he will end up. I don't think he'll get full custody. But she's not going to end up with what we want Lisa to end up with. So I'm just sort of like, all right, Lisa, you like it. We love it. You really believe. And she also doesn't take sound advice either. She also doesn't take sound advice. Remember, Leah Black had given her attorneys and things like that to consider, and she didn't take them. So I'm not saying that she had to, but I just don't know. I don't know with with, uh, Lisa. But their converse, this conversation leads to Larsa opening up about, you know, her not being as close with her in-laws anymore since the divorce. Lisa then decides to apologize to Larsa for not being, uh, checking in with her her friends and more. And this is all coming out because of what happened in Palm Beach. If, and this is why it's important to go back to Palm Beach, because if they did not call her out, and look, I did feel like it was a lot, but if they didn't call her out, Lisa wouldn't be reflecting like this. Lisa probably wouldn't have that conversation with Jody. She probably wouldn't be having this conversation with Larsa. Just saying. So um, from there, Lisa gets a reminder that she needs to check in with Jody. And this is why I said, this is who Lisa is. Lisa calls him. She's like, I'm just checking in with you. I got a reminder to check in with you. And Lars is like, you don't say that. You check in. You don't say that you're checking in because you got a reminder and you, you've been. He's been asking you to to check in. But this is who Lisa is. This is the level of shallow. I'm sorry, Lisa. This is the level of surface Lisa is. Because Larsa gets it, and we think that Larsa. And I, but I've said this about Larsa. She gives us the the surface image, but there is more depth to to Larsa. Larsa came out of that divorce sitting pretty. Larsa, she's a lot more grounded than she pre- lets the world see, okay? But Lisa calls Jody. She's like, I'm just checking in, you know, because I got a reminder to check in on you. Like, it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel real. Like, she could have just, like, just thinking of you. But she's like, I'm here with Larsa, though. It was so cringy and awkward. Cringy and awkward. 
All right. Speaking of cringe and awkward, we have to talk about this Mother's Day luncheon that Dr. Cole is throwing for the mothers, but also specifically Lisa. So Lisa picks up Larsa in the Corolla, her housekeeper's Corolla, to be funny. I appreciate the funny, though. I appreciate the funny. But Dr. Nicole, Dr. Nicole knows how to throw a party. Not only is she coming to this party, she has a poet to help the ladies say nice things to each other. The, the whole situation looks great. She's gotten them denim, personalized denim jackets. Dr. Nicole knows how to throw a party, but she's a Virgo. So it makes sense. It makes sense. Attention to detail. I told you, get you a Virgo. I mean, they might work your nerve, but get you a Virgo. <laughs> Meticulous. So she's throwing this party for the ladies. Everyone's arriving. Kiki arrives. Kiki sees Anna. Anna? Like, Kiki knows. She knows who Anna is. She's like, Anna? She's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Kiki hit, cracks me up. She adds the light, fun energy when necessary. But based on the preview for what's to come, her and Lisa, I'm team, I'm team, like, like, you know, I'm never team anyone. I'm team Kiki. I'm team Kiki. Lisa, you've been training us all this season. We still love you, though, Lisa. Come back, come back. We still love you, but you've been draining us all, including your friends and Jody. all right? Anyways, so Anna, oh, not Anna. Uh, Kiki walks in, she sees the name. Um, and then Marisol and Alexia come in, and they're like, Anna? And here's the thing, Dr. Nicole. When you were speaking to Kiki about Anna coming, you said one thing, but when Alexia and Marisol came, you made it seem like it was Adriana bringing her, even though it was that. They flash back to the scene where Adriana says she's going to bring Anna. But Dr. Nicole says that she's friendly with her. She's spoken to her. You know, the last reunion says she's spoken to, to Anna. I can see Dr. Nicole and Anna getting along. Bring bring Anna back. Bring Anna back, even if it's a guest. She, The way that she had these women... Alexia and Marisol so shook. My thing is, if you guys were so secure and feel, especially because it's two of you, it feels as if you ran off scared of what Anna might say. And yes, you can, She she's yelling at, at Dr. Nicole, she's wished me dead, she's wished me dead. And then Alexia wants props for it. Like, I'm really defending you, Marisol. No, you're not. Anna and her daughter said stuff about you. You're you and your son too. <laughs> but I don't know what exactly... Before this, because remember, they used to be friends, Anna, Marisol, and Alexia. I don't know what happened in that friendship that they are no longer friends. But I get why they're not friends because of that interview that they did with Behind the Velvet Rope and the things that were said. But I believe Anna. I believe Anna has, she's one of those people in, in the Miami circles or with friends in Miami that know things. So I do believe Anna, but I just didn't believe. <laughs> why did why did Alexia's like I'm gonna take my my jacket? <laughs> why are you taking the jacket? But but you're leaving. But Alexia is calling out Dr. Cole like you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. We don't get along with Anna. You know what you're doing. I agree. I I really do agree. But Dr. Nicole, you're doing your job. Stirring the pot. <laughs> Look, you're doing the job and Adriana is, 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 is there to help you because this is also Dr. Nicole's event. She's a full-time housewife. Adriana is a friend of. Um, she said, I could, everyone could bring a plus one. The only person that brought a plus one was Adriana. We don't get to see Anna in this episode, but we see a preview that Anna's coming next week. Miami was the only show to have a new episode this week, which is fine. It's something for us to talk about. But as you know, I'm traveling. So content is coming here and there. But I will say this. I did post a video. I don't know what time it is there. Y'all. I'll just say yesterday. But I did post a video about Kevin Hart suing Tasha K for extortion for $250,000. Saying they accusing her of extorting him for $250,000 so that she would not release an interview that she's since released with his former assistant. If you missed that, be sure to check that out. I will be posting here and there, but I'm probably posting more pictures and things like that for members here on YouTube. For those that are listening, head on over to teamcampfire.com backslash join. We even did a members live while I've been here in Japan. So if you want to, to see some of that stuff, become a member here on the YouTube channel. For those that are listening, 
you can also join YouTube. We appreciate it. Don't forget, guys, you can hear our live replays back on on, on the podcast, Kempire, and other additional episodes as well. While you're there, help us get to 500 reviews on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify before 2024. Time's a ticking, y'all. Help me get there, please. Anyways, I'm not going to beg. <laughs> not going to beg. Damn it. But anyways, back to this. Real Housewives of Miami. Marisol, but here's the thing what I can appreciate because even if I feel like they should have stayed, they, they, they're running away, I appreciate the drama that both Alexia and Marisol were, were, were giving in this moment. Alexia's like, oh my gosh, you know what you're doing, Nicole, you know what you're doing. And and then she's, she's yelling at Marisol, I'm defending you, I'm defending you. See, uh, you say I don't defend, I'm defending you. And then Marisol's walking out, she's like, and you know exactly what you're, what you're doing. She's wished me that you expect me to sit, sit here or sit across from a person that has wished me dead. And we know why Adriana's doing it, but she wants to get back at Alexia and Marisol. No matter how many times she's trying to make peace with them, she's trying to get back at them. This cast is top tier, and especially the friend doves. The friend doves are bringing it. They're bringing the funny. They're bringing the drama. And speaking of friend doves, the preview, Kiki is bringing the drama between her and Lisa. I told you I'm team Kiki on this one. I don't even know what played out. I'm team Kiki, but I I have the right to change my mind. (laughs) Look, stay tuned. Look, stay tuned. Anyways, guys, I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season. I will be back in the studio in the new year. In the new year, because I'll be spending the new year new year here in Kyoto, Japan, eating all the snacks. Eating all the snacks. Look. Eating all the snacks. I just posted a quick video on my TikTok. Again, guys, follow me on socials at the Kempire on TikTok, on Instagram, on threads, on Twitter. I'm sharing all kinds of different things on all different platforms. But everything Kempire, thekempire.com. Subscribe to the podcast, Kempire, on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Give us a five-star review while you're there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. It is subscribers only live chat. Shout out to our King's Guards for holding us down while I've been away. And of course, thank you to our channel members for supporting us on a monthly basis so that even while I'm gone, you're, we're able to keep the lights on in the studio. <laughs> all right, y'all. I hope you all have a fantastic New Year, Kwanzaa, all of that good stuff. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas as well. Let's get out of here and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, y'all. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got